Hey guys, this episode we're talking about web components. We're gonna define a custom HTML tag with some associated JavaScript, and we'll be able to use that anywhere in our application. Um, and this is actually what powers TurboStream events in the Turbo library. So we're gonna be talking about how that works as well and build a rudimentary version of that. But first, let's take a look at building our very first web component. So here I have a very simple HTML page and we have this text right here that we want to be able to create a word count for. Now, normally you might create a paragraph tag down here at the bottom and you might say, hey, the JavaScript will go and count the words and then it will go find that paragraph tag and update it. What we want to do is have the logic encapsulated in here. So we want to be able to have, instead of something like the paragraph here counting all of that, we want to have a word count tag that is defined down here and it has all of the logic for handling it right inside of itself. So our HTML doesn't have to have any IDs or anything like that. We can just define a custom element. So let's talk about how we do that. Well, there is a custom elements um, variable in the browser that you can interact with and you can say define the word count uh, element and we want to have a class called word count that it will instantiate and use as the place for all the callbacks and other things for interacting with this word count um, element. So we can define the class for word count. This needs to extend the HTML element. Um, we can also have this do things like extend the HTML paragraph element um, or a div or something like that. But this is actually something that I believe is not fully supported yet in Safari. You have the ability to do these uh, autonomous elements, but not ones that inherit from like a paragraph. Um, so we'll just do an HTML element here for this example. So we'll say constructor, just like we normally would with a class, we will call super so that the HTML elements constructor, constructor gets called as well. And then we can do whatever we want in here. So the important thing that we need to do is first we need to create a shadow um, DOM, so we'll say attach shadow with the mode of open. And this is going to allow it to be interactable with the JavaScript, so that is an important um, setting there that we want to have. And we can then go and say const text equals document.create element. We'll make a span. And then um, we can say text.text .text content equals hello world. And we'll have our shadow append child text. So that's what we're going to have set up um, just to do a very basic version of this. And you'll see here that hello world shows up down here. And if we inspect this, we're going to see the shadow root inside of our word count and that is our custom component. So it's being um, handled properly by our JavaScript where it mounts whenever it sees one of these. We can go into our index.html and we could put in another one. And each of those will have their own independent instance. They are um, being created as spans, so they're not, uh, they don't have any CSS applied to them, but you can target all of those elements and things that you need to. So, Let's continue by doing a word count. So what we really need to do is we need a reference to the parent. So we'll say um, this.parent node. So if we console.log out our parent, what we want to do is be able to grab the article up here so that we can count all of the words inside of it. And so we'll do that um, by doing the following. And here we see that that has grabbed the article as the parent node correctly. So that's good. So we have our shadow root and our text element. And now we need to actually set the text accordingly for our um, word count. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a set interval where we will update this count every, say, 200 milliseconds. 
So as you're typing, it will be updating um, and going as we go, uh, or as you type. So we'll say words, and we'll have um, this dot count words for our parent node, and then we will say text dot text content equals count here, and we want to do this every 200 milliseconds. So we can have a count words for a node, and we will grab um, the text, which will be the nodes dot inner text or node dot text content, and then we can return text dot split, and we'll use some regex here to say on spaces. Um, we just want to grab all of the words and split them up when uh, there's a space in between them, and then we can grab the length of that array that is returned. So that is going to set us up, but we're gonna want to initially do this as well for the very first time, so it's not blank when the page loads and then after 200 milliseconds it appears. We wanna do that immediately, so we can do that um, before we add that to the browser. So there we go, we have 212 words. If we go and delete this, it will update to 95, 94, and we have two words, sample heading, hello world, and it will go ahead and automatically update that for us as we go. So what's really cool about this is if we define this custom element, we don't have to do anything on the JavaScript side where we interact with the elements or any of that, it's all encapsulated inside of this word count and our HTML is just a single HTML tag that we add to the page and all of the JavaScript is wired up correctly. So you can use this to actually build out tabs and other features that you might want with custom elements. So let's talk about how the TurboStream um, components work in Hotwire. So let's write out a TurboStream element on the page and we'll recreate a very basic version of that. So a TurboStream tag looks like this. We have a TurboStream and we have an action on it, which is something like update. And then we also have a ID, um, which is called target. And this would be something like an ID of article up here. So if we had ID article, we could put article as the target, and then inside of there, it's expected that we have a template. So if we put hello world in here, what we would expect this turbo stream to do is to go and find the article with the ID, um, then it would go and say, okay, we have the action update, so we want to take the contents of this, and we want to update it with the words hello world. So that's what it would do um, in turbo and we can recreate that pretty simply. So let's go and create a new custom element. So we'll say stream element. Um, and actually this is the name I believe that uh, they use in Turbo, so we can really keep this aligned. So we'll have our new element. We'll have our constructor, which is going to uh, do all the processing initially. And this has a few things that it needs to be able to access, right? So let's in here say console.log this.action. We want to log the target and we want to log the template as well. So we're gonna have a get for action. We'll have a get for target and for the template. So target and template. Now if we try and open this in the browser, you're gonna see the must call super constructor in derived class error message, and that's because we didn't add the super here that I mentioned up above when we added that. This is really important, but JavaScript will be kind enough to let you know exactly what you're missing, and we can save that and we'll see that we get update, article, and our template available now. So all of that is wired up correctly, and we can start implementing our um, action to actually apply this action to the target with the template. So what we can do here is we can define a uh, stream actions object and we can add methods to that 
so that we can call these methods and we can look them up very easily. So let's say um, here we want to have stream actions and we'll use this dot action square brackets to grab that method um, from that object and then we can console dot log this and we'll refresh our page and we'll see we get that update method back which uh, is what we want to call to execute. So here we can give it the um, element for example and we know that this will have access um, to the correct uh, target and the template. So we can do a document.query selector here with element.target and say const um, target here. We can console.log the target element out. So right now we just have the ID for it, but by doing this and actually calling this function, um, we will say, we will be able to actually print that out. Let me change that to actually execute the function. And now we get the article um, element from the page. So we're able to look that up. So all we need to do inside of here then is to say target.innerHTML equals empty string. So we'll clear out all of the contents of that. And then we'll say target.append the element.target.content. So everything inside of the template rather um, is what we want to put inside of there. So we'll save this and we'll refresh our page and we'll see that we get hello world here but it's cleared out the word content or the word count and all the words inside of there because we're actually updating that um, div. So uh, if we go and move the ID of article somewhere else and we say we'll have an article here, article, maybe a H2 for a turbo stream example. And then we'll put a, let's do a div with the ID of article here. Now, if we were to run this new version in the browser, we'll see that it actually updates the uh, article at the top instead of the correct article down below. And the reason for that is because we did a simple query selector here with the article value. And um, this is gonna find the first article, but we actually need to prepend this with the hash symbol so it finds the ID instead. So we could either do a um, string like this where we prepend that hash symbol or we could do the more straightforward get element by ID method call and that is now going to put it in the correct location. So all of that is now wired up correctly and we can go and implement other um, replace. We can do before, after, append, you name it. Um, all of those are now options that we can add to our stream actions to handle other operations that we might want to add. And while this is a very rudimentary version of what's actually in Turbo because they handle things like animations, um, this is actually wonderful. Like it's very, very simple implementation that does basically the same things. And we can use this anywhere on the page. Plus, if we were to go and let's open up the console here, Let's go down and um, edit as HTML and we'll paste in a new turbo stream and we'll say hello world um, two. We can insert this into the page and it will go and execute that action as soon as it's inserted on the page. So there we go, we get our hello world two and it is good to go. So the other thing that I wanna mention here is that generally with, um, with turbo stream events, it needs to remove them at the very end. So we can have a uh, this.remove at the end of this, and that will execute our action, update the page, and then remove the element once it's been processed. So here we have this update that was left over and the other one that we added. Those still exist, but now if we refresh the page, it will remove those automatically. So if we edit as HTML, we can paste in that um, hello world too. And if we save this, it will be added. You notice it disappeared because it finished updating the page and removed itself. 
So there we go. We have a very basic version of TurboStrams implemented from scratch in very few lines of code. This is very short, very sweet, very simple. And you can use this for all kinds of things. Like I mentioned, you could use this for adding tabs to your application. Um, you could do this for tool tips, you name it. There's a lot of possibilities here. But I thought this was an extremely useful use of web components and custom elements for TurboStream events. Um, I thought that was a great idea. They also use this for Turbo Frames as well and any other custom elements that you might see in Turbo in the future. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.